Well, here at the Aussie Wire, we love to follow stories of people who are trying to make a difference. And there's many different ways to try and make a difference. Some people, like myself, do it through media and communications. Some people do it quietly, working away in charities or raising families or doing business. Some people take their fight into the legal realm. And for some people, the legal fight comes to them rather than the other way around. My next guest is one such person. A legal fight came his way. He fought it. And, well, I won't tell you what happened. I'll let him tell you for himself. Lyle Shelton from the Family First Party, thank you so much for coming on the Aussie Wire. And thank you to ADH TV for this amazing looking studio you've got there. Yeah, thanks, Topher. It's a privilege to be with you. Now, for those that don't know, I've got a newspaper clipping here. Let's, let's just bring that up. But for those that don't know, what happened? What what led to you being sued and uh, being on the hook for potentially twenty thousand dollars? Yeah, well, look, way back in January of twenty twenty, there was a protest held at a Brisbane City Council library where two LGBTIQA plus drag queens were involved in one of these you know, drag queen story times, and a, a group of very courageous uh, young Liberal National Party students from the University of Queensland uh, went into that uh, scenario and was simply very peacefully but firmly saying drag queens were not for kids. Uh, I saw this blow up on social media. I recognised at least one of the participants and I thought, these guys are brave. And I thought, you know, I really should have been there with them, supporting them because these drag queens are peddling something, you know, very dangerous for children. Well, the next day, the leader of that protest, um, Wilson Gavin, after a massive social media um, backlash, uh, Wilson, of course, a gay uh, man himself, uh, was abused by the LGBTIQA plus com community and uh, he tragically committed suicide. Yeah. I was really moved by this. I wrote a blog uh, where I essentially said that drag queens were dangerous role models for children. A few months later, I was sued. Mm. Now, this this idea that you know, drag queens are dangerous role models for children, there is room for debate here. People can debate that if they want to. That's what a free country is all about. So from your perspective, when they came for you, did the thought ever cross your mind of just kind of paying them to go away? Or was it always just the fight is on, I'm going to stand up for my right to say these things? Yeah, look, for me, um, you know, the fight was on because, you know, I'd researched, I did some Googling, which, you know, most children can do. They have devices these days. And I found that these two drag queen social media presence was quite horrendous. Mm. Uh, one of them, Johnny Valkyrie, a woman uh, tr presenting to children as a man, had pictures on her Facebook page of young women uh, with their breasts cut off and their raw scars mm. uh, and was crowdfunding for her own double mastectomy, which she, she went through with tragically. The other drag queen, Dwayne Hill, um, was parading on his Facebook page uh, an award from the pornography trade, uh, an Adult Entertainment X award. He also had a picture of a fake penis with a, a diamond ring around it. His, his drag name is Diamond Goodrim. Um, you can Google that or, or look at the transcripts of my trial to work out what that mm. means in the wonderful yep. world let me of just, Rainbow Let me flag. just suggest don't Google that name at work uh, because that might be an OH, a, a, well, a, a HR violation, the results that you get there. Sorry, Lyle. Good point. Yeah, no, good point, Tova. But but this is the sort of thing, you know, these are the sort of role models that were being placed in front of children. So for me, uh, I didn't want to back down for this. And, and I, I remember clearly um, going to my first compulsory mediation in the Queensland Human Rights Commission. And uh, the, a few days before on the Sunday, we'd had a family event with my extended family. I've got um, younger brothers and sisters who have got young children. And we had all these beautiful little children, nephews and nieces around. And as I went to that mediation with these drag queens, all I could see in my mind's eye was the faces of my little nephews and nieces mm -hmm. and the idea that they could be indoctrinated into these uh, crazy, sexualized, gender fluid worlds that the LGBTIQA uh, plus activists want these children to be indoctrinated into. So I was up for the fight and there was no way in the world uh, that I was going to back down because our children are too precious. Well, that fight dragged on for years, as, <coughs> excuse me, as these sorts of legal proceedings tend to do. But the decision has now been handed down. And uh, without giving too much away, I've grabbed an article here from the Star Observer. Uh, you were successful in that court case. But after this many years and all of the cost and heartache and trouble, does it feel like a win or, or is the punishment actually really in the process that you were forced through? The punishment is definitely in the process. Uh, it was three years, um, probably around about $300,000. My supporters raised over $200,000, yeah, right. which I'm incredibly grateful. The Human Rights Law Alliance, uh, my mm -hmm. incredible legal team, uh, they, their donors kicked in a lot of money. There was a, lot of, there was a big pro bono component in yeah. that. So lots of generosity uh, allowed me to get to where I got. But the process is the punishment. No Australian should have to go through three years mm -hmm 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, a three-day trial being cross-examined by a senior counsel for three mm. hours on the, on the stand, um, you know, for the sake of saying that drag queens are dangerous role models for children. This should not happen in a free country like Australia. So yes, it's a great win, um, brilliant legal work. It should be a great encouragement to all of us who are fighting the fight out there and to those who are watching the fight mm. and, and care about our country. But we've got to see these flawed anti-discrimination laws, these so-called vilification laws, which exist in every state and territory and also at federal level, uh, these laws need to be changed. And uh, I can't find uh, any politicians uh, willing to take up the fight to get law reform in this area so that we can restore free speech to this country. And, and that, that's a fight that desperately needs to be taken up because while these laws are on the book, books, um, this is a chilling uh, effect on freedom of speech and necessary debate in the protection of children. Mm. People often ask, why would you go through that? You know, it was only going to be a $20,000 payout. Instead, you've taken this massive risk, three years of your life, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes, sure, money was raised, but that's money that, you know, that could have gone elsewhere. What's the point? What's the yep. purpose? Was this victory just about you and about getting what you wanted? Or is there, there a bigger picture here? No, it's definitely the bigger picture, Topher, and uh, and I think you know the people who chipped in, um, you know, small amounts of money that added up to a lot. They they could see this too. Mm. That um, by going after me, these people are going after them. And uh, the bigger picture is freedom of speech in this country and pushing back on the indoctrination of our children. Uh, this is harmful, harmful, insidious, wicked stuff that's being perpetrated upon our children to teach them that their gender is fluid, put them on a pathway to, you know, uh, chemical and physical castration and brain damage from puberty blockers, etc., uh, to uh, put sexualised role models in front of children. I mean, in, in the court case, uh, the drag queens admitted that the whole point of a drag persona is to be sexualised. Now, anyone who thinks that anything to do with sex and sexualisation should mix with little children, um, you know, that is just wrong. And uh, we have to be free to say that that is the bigger picture in this. And, and that's why we fought it. And uh, look, whilst these bad laws are still on the books, I think it's going to make uh, these LGBTIQA plus activists and their taxpayer funded lawyers, they got taxpayer funded mm -hmm. legal help, it's going to make these people think twice uh, before taking on these these vexatious cases again. Well, Lyle, thank you for uh, for accepting that fight when it came and found you. You've now set a precedent that uh, the things that you said are now able to be said and repeated again. Uh, we have a court precedent saying that that is, in fact, an acceptable thing and people don't need to be afraid of being sued by activists for saying the things that you've said. So thank you for setting that precedent. Thank you for your work. I look forward to talking to you in future. You're, you're involved in a lot of great projects, a lot of great uh, organisations, and uh, you do really great work. So we look forward to having you on in future here on the Aussie Wire. Thank you so much, Tova.